Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back so today we are supposed to start discussion of uh, monopolistically competitive market more specifically as we already have uh, already mentioned uh, multiple times earlier that the same producer okay, under the ceteris paribus condition or taking his uh, cost structure are same if he could face a competitive product market or the market where he is going to sell his product. Okay, if that market is comp perfectly competitive, what will be his optimum output decision? Alternatively, if the same producer taking given his uh, cost structure, if he goes for a market or goes to deliver his product in a market which is monopoly kind, so what will be his optimum product decision? So, both these two cases we have discussed. Today, we are discussing that if that same producer goes to a market uh, with his product where the market structure is monopolistically competitive. Okay. So, that we will discuss uh, what will be his optimum output decision okay. how, or more specifically how much quantity of output he should produce so that he can be able to maximize his profit. Profit maximization is the sole objective okay, we are assuming. Okay. So, before that, before that let us discuss one thing in the monopoly kind of market whatever we have discussed that just one extension it is there also in your book that is called a price discrimination. Price discrimination in a monopoly market price discrimination discrimination ok. So, so we have as a, we have shown in using the diagram suppose this this side we are measuring quantity that side we are measuring all the revenues costs price everything right so we have shown that if a monopoly he suppose this is his average total cost curve okay suppose say if it is a short run case suppose this is average variable cost curve and this is his mc curve marginal cost curve and suppose this is the demand curve average average revenue that is what is the demand curve that is the average revenue line because that is the price line and we told that price is identical to average revenue in any market ok whatever this is the price that is the average revenue. So, this is the average revenue curve and given that kind of straight line if we assume that the average revenue curve or demand curve downward straight line we will have similar straight line marginal revenue curve with having the same vertical intercept right and slope is the double of that air line or demand curve that we have we have proved in the class right. So, we know that at this point MR equals to MC is satisfied and slope of the MR curve is less than slope of the MC curve. So, both first order and second order conditions are satisfied at that point. So, that producer will produce this much of output ok to maximize his profit and he will set this much of price per unit of his output or per unit quantity of his output to sell his product ok in the monopoly market because this is the demand curve he is facing. So, he is in a monopoly market right and we have shown that if he follow monopoly producer kind of thing markup pricing behavior, he will produce this much quantity of output and he will set this much price per unit of output right. Alternatively, if he, if he uh, follow uh, competitive behavior ok or competitive behavior is basically so monopoly behavior he is setting price equals to you know MC ok. So, uh, we have shown that that we study we have shown MR equals to MC profit maximizing condition MR we have shown price whole into 1 minus 1 upon absolute e that thing equals to MC. So, monopoly will set its price equals to MC by this entire component. So, MC with the markup factor 
1 by 1 minus 1 upon elasticity absolute elasticity okay, this thing entirely. Okay, this kind of price you will set okay, and visa is if he follows this is the monopoly, this is the monopoly price situation monopoly. Alternatively, if he follows competitive behavior, he will set price equals to marginal cost. This is basically the competitive behavior, competitive or perfectly competitive behavior. So, if he follows perfectly competitive pricing behavior or something, so he should produce this much of output because at this point, this is the year is the price line, price equals to MC is here. So, he should produce this much of output and he should sell each quantity of the output at this much of price. And using that, we have shown that this kind of thing, no, this kind of rectangular kind of area, we are we are drawing a phrase, the diagram, quantity this side, suppose price, marginal revenue, everything that side, this is the demand curve, okay, this is the MC line, okay and suppose this is the MR line. Okay. So, we know that this is the competitive equilibrium, competitive equilibrium competitive equilibrium. Basically, price equals to marginal cost. This is the airline and this is the monopoly equilibrium. Where M R equals to M C okay? and he will say this is the price we are telling monopoly price. Okay? So, this is the monopoly price. So, if we compare this monopoly price point say suppose this point so we are telling E 1 this is E. Okay? If we compare E versus E 1 points, right? so E 1 point is the competitive equilibrium point and E point is the point where price equals to uh, or uh, monopoly price, okay? where price is equals to marginal cost into the markup factor, which is mark markup factor is greater than 1. Okay? So, if we compare, we can see that this is the, okay, this triangular kind of area is the dead weight loss of the monopolist, dead weight loss which is generated by this monopolist to the society and since dead weight loss is a net loss to the social welfare. Okay? So, we concluded in the last class or last lecture that this monopoly solution is not a socially desirable solution, right? it is not a desirable solution from the societal point of view. right? Now, the question is, is it always the case? Look, if the monopoly can do price discrimination, so today we are discussing price discrimination, right? By price discrimination, what we are referring? By price discrimination, we are referring that the producer monopolist, na, he is the price setter, okay? He is price maker in the market because he is the sole tiger, okay? So, if he set price for, say, suppose I, I, I am a monopolist, I am selling some product in the market. I am setting, I am selling my product, same product to you say maybe uh, rupees 5 per piece of that product, to your friend maybe rupees 7 per piece of that uh, product. Okay? So, what I am doing? I am setting different price to the different customer. Not only that, I can set different price to the two different units to you. When you are purchasing one, one piece, Say, uh, suppose that product is pen, one piece pen, uh, the price is say suppose uh, 5 rupees uh, per pen. When you are purchasing two piece pen, I am setting price as uh, 7 rupees uh, per pen. Okay? So, 
given this example, no, some of you are thinking that sir, can it be possible in real life? When one pen I am purchasing its price is whatever per pen, when two pen is price is more, can it be possible in real life? Yes, that is possible. Okay. Let me give you a specific example that is called specifically called second degree price discrimination. Okay. But in your syllabus, we will not specifically uh, discuss what is first degree price discrimination, what is second degree price discrimination, what is third degree price discrimination, whatever is there in your book that is called perfect price discrimination, perfect price discrimination, perfect price discrimination discrimination that is there in your book and that is within our syllabus. This perfect price discrimination is basically the first degree price discrimination, first degree. Three types of price discriminations are there in economics, first degree in monopoly market, first degree price discrimination, second degree price discrimination and third degree price discrimination. What is there in your book that is actually the first degree price discrimination, although in your book it is not mentioned that first degree price discrimination, rather it is mentioned in your book that it is perfect price discrimination, I am telling. So, the kind of example what I was giving, no, more units you are purchasing of a product, price per unit is increasing, that kind of price discrimination is there, all of you uh, know, but you perhaps you do not bother to know that much, you can. See electricity bill, okay each of your home, no, there is an electricity bill every month or every uh, once in two months like that or once in three months one bill is coming, no. So, see you perhaps never bothered because your father or somebody is paying that, right, uh, electricity bill. If you see that printed bill backside, right, they are pricing strategies, uh, how that electricity distribution company, no, whether your state electricity board or maybe some uh, private company, whatever it is. Okay, that distribution company, how they are pricing the electricity consumption at your home, if you see that back side of that bill, it is clarified. So, suppose uh, your consumption per unit, right? So, 0 to 75 units, okay, per unit price is say suppose rupees 5 per unit. If consumption lies between say 76 to 150 units, say price is maybe per unit rupees say 6 per unit. More, more what I am highlighting as you are consuming more per unit of that product in electricity what is the unit? I, I am sure engineering student no? you must know that kilowatt hour okay? that is the unit kilowatt hour. Okay? Anyway that is not the issue here they used to mention per unit. Okay? So, 0 to first say first 50 units or first 75 units as per different electricity distribution company that slab may be different, okay. but this is the pricing strategy. Okay. First few units per unit that is the price. Next few units if consumption exceeds 75 units, okay, maybe 76 to next level 150 that is the slab, so price is little bit more. Even it is 150 say 151 to say 200 suppose price is rupees. Uh, 7.5 per unit like that this kind of pricing strategies are there are, are followed by different electricity distribution companies. So, this is more specifically in economics terms it is called second degree price discrimination. Okay. So, this kind of pricing 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 things are there second degree price discrimination. Okay. So, this is one sort of price discrimination where different units of the product have different price. More specifically, larger and larger units as you are going to consume, you have to pay more and more price per unit of that commodity. This I am talking about at the domestic, uh, domestic electricity pricing, right? Industrial electricity pricing may be different kind of thing. This is domestic, I am talking about whatever electricity bill is coming to your home, okay, that way. That is called second degree price discrimination. Third, so, this is basically even a single customer, if you consume within 75 units, okay, then some price. If you consume more than 75 units, but within 150 units, some different price, well, larger price and so on. Okay. Th what is the uh, third degree price discrimination? Third degree price discrimination is basically different price to different customer. The kind of example I was telling, I am selling that pen, uh, one piece 5 rupee to you one piece I say 10 rupee to your friend. 
So, two different customer, two different price. That kind of pricing is called third degree price discrimination. Where different, see th this third degree price discrimination in real life where it is applicable, like that electricity uh, pricing, the second degree price discrimination, re real life I am giving you the example, right? Electricity pricing. Similarly, third degree price discrimination, have you ever have seen that? Indian Railway, no? we told that Indian Railway is a perfect example or very good example of a, a monopolist, right? Okay. So, Indian Railway pricing, no? different seats, okay. one price for me, another different price for maybe one senior citizen or maybe a student, some senior citizen concession, some student concessions are there no? in Indian Railway, you people, I am sure all of you know, right. So, some uh, different concessions are there for different categories. So, they are categorizing first different group of customers, general customer or regular customer. Look, the same, say maybe AC 3 tire or AC 2 tire, same seat, one berth. I am paying, say, perhaps 2000 rupees. So, one senior citizen may be paying perhaps, say, 1500 rupees. One student may be paying 1200 rupees, something like that. Right, little bit concession is there, right. So, same service, same everything. See, one, one AC 2 tires bath and one AC 3 tire bath prices are different. Those are not the price discrimination, those are basically the uh, comfort level attached to it, those two baths are different. AC 3 tire, one coach relatively more people are there, AC 2 tire, one coach relatively less people are there. So, you are you are enjoying little bit more comfort, more, more less congestion inside the coach, right. So, the different price for one berth in AC 3 tire and uh, another berth in AC 2 tire, that is not price discrimination. Price discrimination even within the same berth, AC 3 tire, what I am paying, what you are paying, those two prices are different, okay, where comfort level is same, that is price discrimination. Okay. So, that is called third degree price discrimination, where two different prices are there for two different person, two different customers. Okay. And the price discrimination, what is there in your book, that is called perfect price discrimination and more specifically that is first degree price discrimination, where both these kinds of discriminations are allowed. Means, different price for different people, also for a single person, different units, different prices. Okay. So, if that kind of price discrimination the monopolist follow, right, what will happen? Look at here. In a simple diagram we can show. Say this side, the quantity and suppose this is the demand curve. Okay. So, we are measuring price, average revenue, marginal revenue, everything that side, marginal cost. Okay. And suppose this is the demand curve, so average revenue line, this is the marginal revenue line and suppose this is the marginal cost line. Okay. So, I am the producer, I am the monopolist in that market. Ideally, I should not be able to see what is the demand curve, because this demand curve is generated by whom? The potential customers, what is their willingness to pay for this commodity, what I am selling, right? They should know, okay. that is the private information to them, that is, that is not known to me. But if we assume that somehow I know that, then I can but follow perfect price discrimination. How? Look here. So, if I follow in this particular case, suppose this is the marginal cost line, this we, are, we have taken a, a peculiar kind of example where the marginal cost is same, constant marginal cost kind of example. Like where we can see, see that natural monopoly we have discussed, right? Natural monopoly. Okay. So, initial for the establishment of the uh, production base initially like that water supply, telephone distribution or electricity distribution and all, huge amount of infrastructure, initial infrastructural expenditure is required. But once your ex infrastructural expenditure is done, your setup is done, are ready, right? So, suppose five, uh, five households are there in the locality, right? One more household came. So, to give the water connection to that additional household, no, your, uh, your expenditure is very less, negligible expenditure is there, just additional pipeline is, will be there from that main line to that household, that connection, right. So, whatever that uh, cost you are incurring additionally, marginal cost, if another household comes, exactly same sort of marginal cost you will face, perhaps the same distance of additional pipeline you have to fix there. Okay. So, you can think of certain cases are there in real life where marginal cost almost same, okay, fixed. Okay. So, usually you said marginal cost curve we used to face, but certain specific kind of cases are there where marginal cost is fixed. Okay. 
the same ad every additional unit same amount of cost will be. So, that kind of suppose one marginal cost curve we are taking this way. Okay. We are taking this horizontal line to make you understand better that that is why. But usual case no you say marginal cost also that kind of curve we can take here and we can show the exactly the same thing this first degree price discrimination or perfect price discrimination by that what we are referring. This is okay. So, of course, if that producer follows the profit maximizing behavior or competitive behavior right, he should set he should produce this much of output and he should set this much price per unit of output right to sell his product in them right. And if he follows alternatively competitive behavior, he should produce until this ok. And this is the in that case this will be the price because price equals to marginal cost. This is the price line and this is the marginal cost line here is price equals to marginal cost right competitive behavior. Look and by comparing this to equilibrium we told that this is the dead weight loss generated by that monopolist if he follow monopoly pricing behavior right. Now, that monopolist can think of that can I grab this dead weight loss because in any case this dead weight loss is a loss to the society right. So, what I can do if I can uh, follow the perfect price discrimination where I will set different price to the different customers not only that different price to different units to the same customer also. Suppose, the who is the highest valuation customer right in this market the person or customer who has the maximum valuation of this product for this product right. Suppose, this is the highest valuation because demand curve is starting from there. Suppose, that customer is demanding this much of commodity. So, so first unit very first unit he is paying this much very high ok, maybe next unit little bit less and so on next unit little bit less and for every unit whatever is his maximum willingness to pay monopoly is charging exactly that same price ok. Because we are assuming that somehow suppose monopoly know what is the demand curve that means I know that uh, what is the uh, maximum willingness to pay by different customers right. So, so as a result say suppose within this segment of that product right the monopoly is actually setting different price as per the different willingness to uh, willingness to pay by that si single customer ok. So, uh, all the consumer surplus whatever that consumer can enjoy by paying this price or that price whatever it is entirely grabbed by the monopolist by setting price equals to the exactly maximum willingness to pay by that customer and that is true for every unit. So, if you look at from customer's point of view that customer's point of view the pricing be in between that thing that 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 segment of the consumption whatever he is consuming he is paying different price for the different units. So, it is basically one sort of second degree price discrimination because different units different price. Not only that suppose second customer is standing in between this. So, he is consuming uh, this and this red colored this segment right ok. So, this second customer within his consumption no different units one unit this is the price another unit this is the price and so on. Not only he is facing also the second degree kind of price this price kind of thing by the monopolist because different units uh, for different units different price. The price whatever second customer is paying and price whatever first customer is paying those are also different ok. So, that is why this perfect price discrimination it is a combination of both second degree and third degree price discrimination that we are coming. But what is the message is here the because monopolies know what is the maximum willingness to pay by every customer or even within a single customer for different units of the same product right he is setting price accordingly for every unit. ok. And as a result if that is the case monopoly will not definitely stop until the after this production he will not stop because for this unit right he will set this price for this unit he will set this price for this unit he will set this price. Look whatever unit he is going to set right or whatever price he is setting all the price is above his marginal cost. So, he will be happy to set that price if he is allowed to do set that kind of different price actually in this price discrimination. Uh, may may not be allowed by the government regulation and all ok in different markets or in different society. 
but if it is allowed by the government regulation and monopoly knows the what is the demand curve or what is the willingness to pay situation by different customers, he will be happy to charge different prices to different customers okay? or more specifically he will be happy to follow uh, price discrimination okay? and look at here when he is charging this much price right, what guarantees that that associated customer will purchase that product at that price because he is not charging anything above the maximum willingness to pay. So, I will always that, that customer will always pay right. My maximum willingness to pay for that pen is say 12 rupee right and I have been charged 12 rupee only. So, I will consume that because exactly whatever I am I am I am paying 12 rupees my valuation also is that. So, I will part participate in the market right. If its valuation is charged more than that or price is charged more than that I will not purchase, but it is charging exactly that way. So, what is happening in that way? whatever will be. So, if let me let me take a, a new diagram. Okay. Suppose this is the price uh, price line or demand curve, this is the M C line right. If monopoly follow the single price things okay, and monopoly is forced to follow the competitive uh, pricing. So, this is the price equals to marginal cost line right. So, this price at this price he has to sell each of his product because he is forced to follow competitive pricing right. So, this entire area will could be the consumer surplus right. Now, what is happening this entire area which could be consumer surplus that is appropriated by the monopolist as the producer surplus because this, this price is charging to one customer, this price is charging to the another customer and so on. So, which could be consumer surplus that is becoming producer surplus, a total surplus of the society is not is not uh, changing at all. Okay. So, as a result when when instead of this is average revenue curve or demand curve, this is marginal revenue curve, this is the marginal cost curve, if he follows monopoly behavior he should produce this much and this will be the price per unit of the product if he follows competitive behavior this much he should produce and this should be the price per unit right. So, by comparing those two we told that this could be this yellow color shaded area could be the dead weight loss right societal loss. But if that monopolist is allowed to follow price discrimination this will be the production will not be uh, shortened up to this level rather production will be until the competitive level and entire which could be the dead or loss that will be also appropriated by the monopolist as the producer surplus. So, entire consumer surplus what could be under the competitive solution that will be grabbed by the monopolist as the producer surplus, but total surplus will not be reduced or which is known as dead weight loss which could be reduced if monopoly if monopoly follow monopoly behavior and not follow the socially desirable competitive behavior. Competitive behavior is the socially desirable outcome and monopoly outcome this is the monopoly's profit maximization because that outcome is coming because of his profit maximization motive right and that is why dead or loss may come and may be generated within the society. So, one remarkable result we are uh, reaching what is that if monopoly is allowed to follow monopoly behavior he will generate some dead weight loss. If he is allowed to follow, uh, he is forced to follow competitive behavior, competitive pricing behavior, there will not be any dead weight loss, but monopolist profit may not be maximum, uh, will not be maximized. Okay. If monopoly is allowed to follow monopoly behavior, but with price discrimination is allowed, monopoly will be happy to produce the competitive amount of output okay? and he will set different price to the different customers even within same customer different price of the different units of the product and as a result. So, what could be the dead oil loss under monopoly solution that dead oil loss will be will no longer be there and there will not be any curtainment. So, when he follows uh, uh, competitive behavior he will produce this much. If he follows uh, monopoly behavior, he will produce this much. So, under monopoly behavior, total quantity of output which will be produced within the society that will be curtained, right? This is the competitive behavior. But if he follows monopoly behavior with perfect price discrimination is allowed, 
total production in the society will not be shortened at all, will not be curtained at all, same amount of output will be produced. And as a result, there will not be any dead old loss in the society, there will not be so, there will not be any welfare loss to the society. So, although monopoly may be able or may generate a monopoly is not a socially desirable outcome. A monopoly producer can be able to produce socially desirable outcome provided that he or she is allowed to follow perfect price discrimination. Okay. Let us stop here. So, this is the price discrimination. Okay. Let us stop here. In our next lecture, we will discuss monopolistically competitive market. Okay.